Flame of the Amazon, featuring Harold Norris, world-famous explorer in person. <laughs> Remember in our last broadcast how the fireworks plan worked to perfection. After quite a wait, the Roman candles, the floral bomb, and the sky rocket all went bluey at the same time. The Indians, scared to death or nearly so, dashed madly into the jungle, anywhere to reach safety from this terrible magic of lights. But then came the big disappointment. The main part of the plan fell through. Mr. Noyce, Jimmy, and Gene Brady went to the hut to get Scroggins and Grogan to ship them downriver to the Brazilian jail for their crimes. They found the little hut empty. Grogan and Scroggins are among the missing. Mr. Noyce, Jim, and Jean are at the door of the hut now. Three very disappointed persons. Well, this is something we didn't expect, Jimmy. It may have been the Indians that rushed this hut during the scramble when the fireworks were at their best. Say, we were lucky, though. Lucky they didn't think of coming into the hut next door. I wouldn't be at all surprised if the Indians that rushed in here figured that they were getting us, Pedro and me. Gosh, you think so? And they got Grogan and Scroggins instead. Well, that's something. Those pistol shots we heard, that must have been what was happening. <laughs> and poor old Limey Scroggins was trying to shoot wild Indians with blank cartridges. <laughs> that's another laugh. I'll bet his face was red. Jimmy, seems to me you're getting quite bloodthirsty. And how? But only when I think of Scroggins and Grogan. Say, I didn't wish them any bad luck, but I hope the Indians show them a swell time. Maybe they'll get the old anthill. You never can tell. Have you two noticed something else wrong here? Remember, we had two Indian prisoners. Pedro and I tied them up. They were over in that corner. Well, they aren't here now, but I'm kind of glad they escaped. Now, come on, children. There isn't much more we can do here now, and the sooner we get away, the better I like it. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Noyce. Now's the time, then. Let's go. You sure you got your guns? Right here, Mr. Noyce. Uh -huh. A gun in one hand and the bull roarer in the other. Say, Jean, will you hold my gun of mine just a second? Here. Okay, but what for? What's the big idea now? Oh, just in case we've got some customers who came in late. We might as well let them know that we got about a bushel of bad magic that we haven't used yet. Here goes. Ooh, that is scary. I almost feel like running myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a mighty handy contraption, Jimmy. We're going to see that thing well taken care of. They come in handy more often than we think. Oh, if it's junk like that you need up here in these jungles, well, just leave it to Jimmy. He can think up more crazy stunts. Noisemakers like that, well, you'd be surprised the effect they have on the savage mind. Some of the Indians make a strange sound effect of their own. It's made with a shin bone, human shin bone. You know, the flat frontal bone just below the knee. They tie a cord to it and whirl it around in the air. Does it make as swell a racket as the bull roar we got? Professional jealousy, Jimmy? <laughs> No, not quite. In fact, not half so good. No, the boomer makes a sound something like this. Of course, the sound doesn't carry so very far, but it is mysterious, all right. Mr. Norris, I was just thinking, what would happen if we were to creep up on some Indian village where everyone was sleeping 
and let go with the bull roar. But you can't just creep up into any Indian village. That's out of the question. They have guards as a rule, and always plenty of dogs that yelp at the least strange sound. Well, if all the dogs howl like that one a little while ago when I stepped on its neck, they're good burglar alarms, all right. But I was thinking about the Indian village where our daddy is held a prisoner. Maybe we can scare the daylights out of that gang, too. We still have some more fireworks, remember? Well, we may be able to work out something like that. But I have a hunch that if I can find that village and have a talk with the chief, the witch doctors, and the council of elders in the village, maybe we won't have any trouble. Well, anyway, it ought to be a whole lot easier now that Grogan and Scroggins are out of the way. But how about the trained jaguars, Mr. Norris? In his letter, Daddy mentioned trained jaguars. Will a thing like the bull roar scare things like that? I haven't seen any jaguars yet. And I doubt if you ever will see any. But I always thought the jungles were just crammed full of danger. Well, what do you call this if it isn't danger? Say, danger is about all we've had. Nothing else but ever since we landed. But I mean like big snakes, anacondas, and man-eating trees, and cannibal fish, and wild animals. The jungle is full of all these things, Jimmy. But they are just as much afraid of us as we are of them. I'll bet if you were to sit down on this trail right here and just wait, say, an hour or so, you'd be surprised how many animals you would see. But you'd have to be awfully quiet about it. Then what is the most dangerous part of the jungle travel, Mr. Norris? You ought to know. You've been here for years. I doubt if I could tell you just what is the most dangerous part of jungle exploration. There are caiman and the river swamps. They are the largest crocodiles, you know. They will, at times, attack a human. Oh. The peccaries, they're the jungle pigs. They've been known to attack a village. It seems to me it's the snakes I'm most afraid of, the big ones. Large or small, it makes very little difference, Jimmy. They usually get out of the way long before you see them. You mean that everything just naturally gets into hiding before a human being gets too near? Well, not everything. We have the ants, for instance. They're afraid of nothing. And then there are the vampire bats, nocturnal brutes. Come into the open only after dark. Well, is it true that they bite you in the throat and bleed you to death, Mr. Noyce? Not at all, Jimmy. Not necessarily the throat. Vampires, as a rule, prefer the big toe or the heel of the human foot best. Oh, gosh. I'd hate to wake up and find a vampire bat tearing my big toe off. Well, that's the too bad part about it. You never know when you're being attacked. Somehow, the vampire bats are able to puncture the skin without causing any pain or discomfort. They do? Yeah. Listen, folks, if you don't mind, I'm going to wear my heaviest shoes when I go to bed. Woo, I'm taking no chances. Fair enough, Miss Jean. But don't worry about vampires. We usually know when we arrive in a locality where the vampires hang out. Oh, but here we are. On the home stretch now. There's the amphibian. Swell. Donovan has her all lighted up like a Christmas tree. I'll bet he's worrying about us, wondering what's holding up the parade. Well, he has... Oh, who goes there? Uh-oh, we're being stopped. That's Donovan. He's over there at the jungle, Ed. Okay, Donovan, come on out. Well, I kind of thought it was the three of you, but I wasn't taking any chances. But, Gordon, there's been about a million Indians dashing up and down this pathway, bumping into each other in such a hurry to be gone. Say, Pat, did you hear the bull roar? How did it sound down here? <laughs> sure and bejabers, it sounded like 20 minutes after closing time on the judgment day. <laughs> hey, what have you got there? Two guns? Well, sure and I have. Uh, this one is my own gun. Uh. But I took this little one out here with me just to have some good, clean fun. Uh. Say, that's my air rifle. You can't shoot anybody with that. <laughs> well, and I know that. But one of them little pellets can sting like the very dickens. You know, we had two Indian prisoners on board. Well, I set them loose, threw them in the river one at a time after the bull roaring got going. I stood in the doorway and peppered them with a little air gun. Lots of fun. But what were you doing with it out here? Well, now, I was down by the river bank when the Indians started coming along the trail. And just as each one was making a run for a good dive into the water to get across to the far side in safety, I let him have a little BB pellet in the sheet of his pants uh, just to give him a little encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Donovan, let's be going. Grogan and Scroggins are missing. I suspect the Indians took care of them. Well, here's the dugout, then. Now, uh, get in, everybody, and we'll go out to the ship. All right, Jane. In you go. Okay, Jimmy. <clears throat> well, you're next, Jimmy. And, Jimmy, you'll be sitting down or you'll be tumbling overboard. All set, Mr. Noyce? Yes, Donovan, and I'm certainly glad you got the ship swung around. If we had needed it in a hurry, you did the right thing. Well, thanks, Mr. Noyce, but I'm sure glad we're not in that big of a hurry. 
And I'm just as glad them two no-goods, Grogan and Struggins, are out of our sight. You know, we got enough to worry about without them on our hands. Well, I guess you're right, Donovan. But they got away with the maps. If the Indians got them, well, maybe I can come back over here tomorrow from the big river and palaver with them. We may be able to get the map back yet. Oh, Mr. Noyce, reach up and take hold of the wing strut there. Uh, hold the dugout steady till Jimmy and Miss Jean get aboard. All right. Uh, you first, Miss Jean. Uh, Jimmy, take her gun till she gets up here. Okay. Okay, Jimmy. Hey, somebody give me a boost. Here you are. Uh, uh, there. I'll make it now, Hunky Dory. All set? Hand up the rifles, Jimmy. All right. Yeah. Now, up you go, Jimmy. Come on. We have an all night here, you know. Maybe some of the Indians have recovered from the strain by this time. And don't say I'm holding up the parade. Here, give me your hand, Mr. Noyce. Yeah. That's it. All right. Upsy uh, daddy. Yeah. There we are. Yeah, your turn now, Pat. Just let that dugout canoe drift. You better kick it aside with your foot. I'll hold you. We don't want it in our way when we start off. Okay. There. There yeah. she goes. And she's over toward the mangrove root. She won't bother us now. Now, yeah, this rope here at the hatchway, is this the anchor? Yes, Mr. Noyce. If you'll just stand by, and when I get up to the controls, I'll give you a shout, then just cut the rope. It's a big rock on the other end, and we don't need it anymore. Go ahead, then. And, Jimmy, you might be packing the guns and ammunition back into that locker out of the way. Yes, sir. And save out one for each of us. Our first stop is back in the big river. Oh, but say, listen, Pedro. Where's Pedro? Oh, yes, yes, I forgot to tell you. I was talking to Pedro. He went across here and headed down the trail to where your gear is hidden. He said it was important. Oh, he did. I suppose perhaps he figured that our own Indian canoemen might get scared of this village bunch swooped down on them. Okay, we'll leave that to Pedro. Well, sure, Mr. Nice, and that's what he said you'd be doing. And he said for you to come down to the place where this river meets the big one, down to where he hid the canoes, and he'd meet us there. Well, all I'm hoping is that we still have our gear where Pedro hid it. We'll need that from now on. And another thing, Mr. Noyce, have you got lots of food? Gee, I'm hungry as a soldier ant. Plenty of good food, Jane. And very soon now, when we reach Pedro and the canoes, we'll have a nice big meal with all the trimmings, just to sort of celebrate the occasion. Occasion is right. Gosh, isn't it swell to be free again and all set to head up country to where Dad is? And nothing to stop us now. Nothing to stop us is right. Uh, Mr. Lice. Are you all set? Yeah. Well, then close the cabin hatch then, will you? Okay, Donovan. Yeah, now, give her the gun. Come on. What happened now? They were just skimming up from the surface of the river when that awful rattling sound came, and down they went back onto the surface with a mighty splash. What happened? What to do now? Is this some more dirty work? There's a surprise in store for you the next time you tune in. I'll be looking for you.